Uh, we kind of hid that from everybody. I joined just for a couple extra hundred dollars to not have to charge my Starbucks drink on a credit card or my gas on a credit card or my groceries on a credit card. And shortly after that, I went Ruby in my first 45 days. I jumped right in and I just did everything that my uh, enroller told me to do. I copied everything she did. I mass messaged everybody and everyone. And sometimes when I look back at those messages, I cringe, but it worked. So it got me somewhere and I was able to <clears throat> earn a thousand dollar Ruby bonus at the time. Um, a year later, I went diamond right after a conference. So if you are not going to conference, you better make it a priority because it literally will change your business. I went paid as a Ruby the following month. I promoted to diamond and so went as a Ruby in February, promoted to diamond in March, promoted to double in April. Um, and with that income, I took it for granted and I just went and purchased stupid stuff that I didn't need. I didn't never paid off my credit cards until I realized um, at the start of 2018 that like I should really get my stuff together. Um, so I was paid as a double diamond in the beginning of 2018. And I started slowly paying off my credit card debt that I had built up because I realized if I wanted to quit my job and go full time with this. I wanted to start from scratch and not have any debt other than like my um, car payments and stuff like that. So I paid off all of our credit cards at every single month. I was still working full time, you guys. Um, and then I went full time in March of this year and I was still a double diamond at conference. Once I left conference, I went triple diamond and doubled my paycheck and now I'm running after presidential. But I do want you guys to know that your paychecks will not exceed your mindset. And I realized that many times throughout my business in the seasons that I went through because it's not all up. You know, there are valleys that you go through and you just have to go through those seasons to be able to get to the mountaintops and it's totally worth it. Um, but I think that cover covers everything. Yes. Okay. So my story is super similar to yours, aside from the fact that I didn't mass message anybody when I first joined because I was terrified, but I literally just did everything that my sponsor was doing. I didn't know what to do. This was all brand new to me. I had never worked in sales a day in my life. So literally the thought of like selling something was just like insanely terrifying, not to mention I was already pretty much counting myself out before I even got started. So it took the first few months that I was jo that I joined the business. It took a while to kind of dig myself out of that mentality that you've never worked in sales. You don't know what you're doing. You're not qualified to do this. And then little by little with every tiny win that I got, my confidence started to grow. So we're going to talk about how you build that confidence because if I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't have the confidence when I first started. And it, it wasn't so much like the confidence in the business. It was just the confidence in myself to be able to create something out of this business. And it wasn't anything huge. I just joined for an extra $200 a month. I wasn't looking to be quote unquote rich or earn thousands or like make thousands of dollars. I literally wanted $200 a month. That's literally what it started from. And I didn't even, I wasn't even confident enough in myself to be able to, or to think that I was even going to achieve that. So it started with the little wins. I would post and we're going to talk a lot about consistency because if you ask anybody who's making more than a hundred dollars in this business, they're going to tell you the way that they got there was they were being consistent, whether it's, they earn that hundred dollars by selling keto coffee or they earn that $100 by selling four wraps. Whatever it was, they obviously did something to get in front of people's faces. So be it like they were talking to people face-to-face, -face, or if they're like me, they're utilizing social media. Connie works her business on social media. Erica does, Vanessa does, Yvette does, Pam does. Like there's tons of us that utilize social media, Candace does, to grow our business. And that's a perk, you guys. This is a beautiful day and age that we live in, that we are able to use this little thing that we carry around with us everywhere that we're already on all the time to be able to generate your income. But the thing is, is you have to be consistent every single day, every, every single day. And I want you guys to know that, and I know that you guys 
Vanessa, she's a diamond, Erica's an emerald. You guys can attest to this, that there isn't one day that changed your entire business. There wasn't one post that changed your entire business. There wasn't one message that you sent out that changed your entire business. It was a little bit of everything every single day, day after day after day after day. And it seems so repetitive and it seems so crazy because if you think about just the business overall, that's all it is. That's all we're doing is we're doing the same thing every single day. The goal is to get distributors. The goal is to get loyal customers every single day. Nothing changes from that goal, from the time that you join and you click sign up to the time that you're celebrating your ambassador diamond promotion. The goal is exactly the same every single day. It's to find loyal customers and to find distributors. That's the goal every day. So how do we, what do we do every single day to achieve that goal? I'm going to kind of go through what I did to go executive and to go Ruby and then to, and then so on and so forth. So when I first joined, I wasn't working on building a team because if I'm going to be honest, I didn't think that I could build a team. I was like, no one's going to want to do this with me. No one's going to want to make money. Like that was my mentality. Well, now I've enrolled hundreds of people, but back in the day, I was like, no one's going to do this. No one's going to do this. No one's going to do this. So because I was saying that to myself, I was never or I was never offering the opportunity to anyone. I was just talking about products, which was fine because it's what got me my shopping spree. It's what got me my first customers. It's how I sold wraps. But I was already putting that in my mind that no one was going to want this business. Therefore, I just didn't offer it. So how would I ever get distributors if I never even offer the opportunity to anybody? I wouldn't. And that's why the first three months I didn't get a single distributor because it was me stopping myself. I was the block. I was the one telling myself, no one wants this. You're not going to sign any distributors. No one's interested until I went to a one team one mission, which now they're called triad events, but same thing. I went to a corporate event and it literally changed everything. That's why Connie says, get to conference. If you can't get to conference, look on the events calendar, get to a try it that's local to you. That's an hour away. That's two hours away. I promise you it will be so worth it. But it was at that event that I saw these people talking about how they kind of dismissed the oppor the business opportunity as well. And they were just working on sales until they got their first one and then they got their second one. So I want you guys to know that confidence isn't something that just because you click the join button, it's an, it's like instantly going to be instilled in you. You are going to be scared when you do this business. You're going to be scared when you make posts. You're going to be scared. Your palms are going to be sweaty when you're making stories. Even if it's not your face, even if you're just recording yourself making a cup, a cup of coffee, in the beginning, you will be scared. But it's okay because all of us are scared. Nothing worth having is going to come easy. I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn that off. I keep getting text messages and I don't know how to like mute that without muting the entire volume. But okay, so yeah, nothing is going to, nothing worth having is going to, to come easy. So it's going to take showing up, you guys. And I want you guys to know that when I first joined, and I know that you guys can attest to this, I would make a post about my kids, okay? And I would get 80 likes, I would get five comments, which is great. That's like a good post for me, okay? And then I would make a business post right after and I would get like four likes and normally those three, four people were on my team. One of them was always my sponsor. And then go ask your dad. I'm busy, girl. Always, never fails, right? Okay, so I was like, oh yeah. So like, Connie, I know that you've gone through the same thing. Vanessa's gone through the same thing. Erica's gone through the same thing. We've even had these conversations like, Someone messaged me and they're interested. I didn't even know that they were interested because they've never commented on a post. They've never liked a single story or whatever. They've never like interacted on my polls. Just because people aren't interacting does not mean that they're not watching. They are watching. I promise you because most of the people that just that joined me in this business, I didn't know that they were interested until I messaged them or they messaged me. They had seen tons of stories. They had seen tons of polls. They had seen tons of posts and I didn't know a single thing about them being interested. They didn't ask a single question. They didn't show any kind of interest until they messaged me or I messaged them. So you're going to, you're going to run into this. And I want to tell you that this is 100% normal, but you're never going to get them to message you if you're not consistent. They say that it takes the average person seven to 20 times 
to see something before they purchase. You guys, that means that we're going to have to show up 20 times before a lot of these people even reach out and ask you a question. Not even that they're going to order, that they ask you a question. So it's you got to be consistent. Even when you feel like no one's paying attention, even when you feel like you're just talking to the wall, you have to show up and you have to be consistent and you have to add to your network every single day. You have to grow that network because eventually you're going to get to a point where Everyone in your network are already a distributor, a loyal customer, they've blocked you. I've gotten there. All of us have gotten there. Connie's gotten there. Erica's gotten there. Vanessa's gotten there. Some of us get there sooner than others. You have to grow your network. When it comes to like, I always like this analogy, like if you're fishing in a pond, would you rather fish in a pond that has 3,000 fish or 300 fish? 3,000 easily, because that means your odds are a heck of a lot greater than if you're fishing in a pond with 300. Okay. Uh, da, 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 what else? Okay, consistency. So Connie, walk me through like a day in the life. What are your go-tos you do regardless? You've done it since day one. Um, my go-to is posting every single day. Regardless. Sometimes two plus times a day. I don't think since I've started, there's been a day that I have not posted like at least once a day every single day I posted even if it had nothing to do with the business I posted something to let people know that I'm still there like to let people know that like they see my face whether it's an it works post or whether it's a post about my life because the one time that they see Chick-fil-a they're gonna think of me the one time that they see black and white stripes they're gonna think of me the one time that they are in a season that they need money, they're going to think of me. The one time that they feel like they're now overweight, they're going to think of me because I'm always showing up on their news feed. And they're going to think I'm that annoying. It works girl until they need me. Okay. Ditto. So like since I've joined in this business, there hasn't been a single day that I haven't showed up for my business, be it on my Facebook I've used Facebook all the way to Triple Diamond. So I I built my business on Facebook, solely on Facebook, all the way to Triple Diamond. Then I hit a wall because everyone I knew was either a distributor, they blocked me, or they were a loyal customer. And then I got to a place where I didn't have anyone new. And that's why I push growing your network every single day because I don't want you guys to fall into that. I don't want that to have to happen to you guys. But I built through Facebook. So every single day I showed up, every single day, when my uncle passed away, when my other uncle passed away every single day, and it wasn't always easy. And there was tons of days when I was sick or my kids were sick or my husband was sick, or I was having a bad day. I was in an argument with a friend, like whatever it may be. There were so many days, you guys, that this is going to be your career choice and you want it to be the thing that takes you into your, your retirement. You're going to go through a lot of life. And I mean, births, deaths, divorces, arguments, like sick days. You're going to go through so many things, so many things that you have to just get used to showing up every single day. There wasn't a, there wasn't a day that I didn't show up, be it in my stories or, you know, a post on my Instagram or a post on my Facebook. For me, stories are so much more beneficial because that's where my views are coming from. I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of views on my stories versus the likes that I get on my actual posts. So I bank on stories. That's where I pour most of my time into learning, into navigating, into trying to perfect and figure out what works best for me. Is it polls? Is it questions? What is it that's working for me? What is it that's pulling in these people? But whatever it is that's getting you, where'd you get your last little customer from? Was it Facebook? Was it stories? Was it reaching out? Wherever that came from, then do more of that. Focus on that and like perfect that because that's where your people are going to come from. But just because like Connie said, you want to stay relevant. So even if she didn't make a business post and I, for the, the years that I've known Connie, I've never not seen her make a business post on Facebook or Instagram ever be it product, business, whatever. So even if she did, she wasn't showing up on her Facebook wall, she was in stories, making her coffee or talking about her fat fighters or talking about whatever it is. You, you need to stay relevant because when someone's thinking of, oh my gosh, I hate my new haircut. I really need to grow my hair out. You're going to be the first person they talk to because you're always talking about those hair, skin and nails. 
if they are going to be in a wedding in two months and they need, they want to lose 20 pounds, you're going to be the first person that they think of because they saw you post about that two day cleanse that gives you results in two days or that TFX that helps people lose 30 pounds in, in 90 days. You have to show up. And I want to say this in like the nicest way possible, but you, if you're new, if you haven't hit diamond yet, you cannot take a day off. You haven't earned that. You haven't earned the right to be able to take a day off and your business still continue to flow. I would say I, it wasn't until I went triple that I felt like I could take a day off and enrollments were still flowing. And that was when I already had a solid, substantial team. I'm talking like $90,000 in sales every month. You cannot, you can't take a day off until you've earned the right to be able to take a day off. And in the beginning, you guys, you're going to feel like you're just turning your wheels and turning your wheels and turning your wheels and turning your wheels. But eventually all those seeds that you plant, they're going to, they're going to bloom, but you have to plant them. You have to, have to, have to, you have to make sure that you're active. You have to make sure that you're reaching out. Even when people leave you on red, even when people are not commenting on your post, you still have to show up for yourself. You're not showing up for these other people. You didn't join this business for these other people. You joined this business for whatever goal that you had to make an extra $300, to make an extra $500, to be able to retire, whatever it is that you want to be able to take a vacation with your family that's not around tax time, whatever it is that you join, that's the reason that you need, that you're chasing these dreams, not because of all these other people on your Instagram. I loved when she said that, Vanessa. You just have to decide that this is what you want. And you guys, in the beginning, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of doing the same exact thing. I did the same exact thing for so long, so long. And then before you know it, you're charted for executive and you're like, holy moly, how the heck did that happen? And then before you know it, you have an extra person and you're helping them get charged for executive. That's literally how you grow this business is just helping people go executive and then helping more people go executive, and then helping more people go Ruby, and then helping more people go Ruby. It's not one single thing that's going to change your entire business. I, although I wish it was that simple, if that was the case, we'd have a lot more billionaires in this world, but it takes laying that groundwork. You have to show up and you have to be willing to do the work, even on the hard days, even on the days where you feel like you're not doing, or like no one's paying attention and you're just spinning your wheels, even on the days when you're sick and you wish that you could, the good thing is that even if you are sick, Vanessa's sick and she gets to show up from her sofa, she gets to show up from her bed when Connie lost her voice, she still showed up even though she sounded like a crazy person. I'm just kidding. You didn't sound crazy, but you know what I mean? Like, even though no one can that use that towards your advantage, like talk about the fact that you're so thankful that you don't have to call in. Talk about the fact that you're so thankful that it doesn't matter. Even if you call out of work, it doesn't matter if you don't get paid because your phone business helps pick up the slack when, when life happens. Even today, my husband had to get new glasses and it was, it wasn't, I mean, not that that wasn't crazy because that's practically what I joined for, but it was 160 bucks. I talk about the little things because people can relate to $160. If you tell someone I paid $160 for this bill that popped out of nowhere with my phone business, they can relate to that so much more than they can relate to the fact that Vanessa earned a $10,000 bonus or the fact that Connie has earned over $100,000 in bonuses. Like people can't relate to that, although that sounds amazing. People can't relate to the fact that I've earned $90,000 in bonuses. I couldn't have related to that when I first joined. And it wasn't a post like that that was going to get me interested in this business. I needed an extra $200. So what I still talk about to this day is those little things. Filling up your gas tank. Being able to take your kids to McDonald's. Being able to take your kids to Chick-fil-A. Being able to go to Chick-fil-A every single day if you're Connie. And being able to, you know, not have to decide between Chick-fil-A and manicure money or whatever it is that you're, you're working towards you guys, but you guys have to show up in 2020. The number one thing that you should do for yourself is consistency because you want, you can, you need to prove to yourself that you can do this. And I know that you can do this, but you won't make it happen unless you take yourself seriously. And no one is going to buy anything. If you don't show up, no one's going to buy into this business opportunity. If you don't show up, no one's going to take you seriously if you don't even take yourself seriously. And it's, it's not something that I remember. I used to feel like I, 
not like I was a fraud, but I felt like, okay, well, how can I sell someone on this business if I don't even know if it's going to work for me? But I, all I knew is that I, I, I earned for, or I joined for $200. I made $200 in my first month. So it's like, it, I had to stop overthinking it. There you go, Melissa. Consistency. That's my word too, but not so much for posting. Consistency for me is, is reading. Like that's what I want to do. I want to challenge myself to knock out more leadership books because that's where I'm struggling. I'm, I'm constantly feeling like I'm lacking when it comes to a leader. So I just had to get serious with myself and I'm like, okay, if that's where I feel like I'm lacking, then why aren't I pouring into that? Whatever that is, if it's leadership, if it's confidence, if it's posting, well then hone in on that and start working on that. You know what I mean? If you feel like you're not good at, at posting because you don't have the pictures, okay, then work on honing in. How are you going to make sure that you have content, whether it's getting ready once a week and taking tons of pictures that day, changing your outfits. I used to do that because I wouldn't get ready. I didn't have anywhere to go. My kids weren't in school yet. Like I didn't need to get ready every day. So I would get ready once a week. And then that day, or if we went to dinner with my family, I was getting ready. Whatever day I got ready, I just took a bunch of pictures that day and used that for the week to come because I was, now I don't care. I will hop on stories just like this with no makeup. My hair's a mess. I just woke up. I'm in my pajamas. Like now I don't care. But the Lisa 2015 would have thrown up before she came on stories without like her hair and makeup done. So whatever it is that is holding you back, then work on that. Fix that. Whatever it is. There was a point where I was, it was actually after I went triple diamond. I got, I gained weight. I got very insecure because when you start making more money, you have a lot more options. You can eat out every single day if you want to. We were taking vacations like crazy. We were eating fast food. We were going out to dinner all the time. We were at Disneyland like six times in one year. We ate churros the whole time we were there. So I gained weight and I felt very insecure. And that held me back from doing a lot of things that helped me grow my business, like taking pictures, like showing up every day in a video. So then I just had to get real with myself. Like if this, if this is what's holding me back, this extra 15 pounds that I gained, if that's what's holding me back, then I need to lose it. I need to get to a place where I feel more comfortable. And I did. I lost freaking 35 pounds in three months, you guys. Our products are legit when you take them, when you open your mouth and you put them in your mouth and you do what you're supposed to do when you're taking them. But it's easy to just put them in your pantry and not take them. So I needed to put them on my counter and I started taking them. Then I started losing weight. And then I started talking about every single product. And when people would see me, they would be like, whoa what's your regimen? What are you doing? And that helped me upsell. And that went, that helped my sales go from one bottle of greens to greens, TFX and new you, which then it's over a hundred BV. You know what I mean? So not only are you feeling better, you're doing the steps that you need to do to get you to wherever it is that you need to be to show up, but you're also making hundred dollar sales with every customer that you get versus 30. What is greens? 30, 30, 30 BB, 33 BB, whatever it is. You know what I mean? So whatever it is that's holding you back, you need to fix it. Because how are you going to get to wherever it is that you want to go if you're not willing to move the roadblock that's holding you back from getting there? So whatever, it, even Erica, I remember we used to have conversation after conversation and I would be like, just record the video record the video and post it. And then she'd record it and send it to me. Is this good? That's perfect. And then she'd post it. And she's like, what do I do? Don't watch it. Cause if you watch it, you're going to pick yourself apart and you're going to delete it. Just move on to the next. Even now I still don't watch my videos. I just throw them up and go on with my life. Erica does the same because at the end of the day, you are going to pick yourself apart. And if you expect that you're going to be perfect, when it comes to videos, when it comes to the font that you need to type out a post, no one is going to be able to relate to you. No one. And therefore, no one will, will be able to join you in this business because they're going to think that I have to be this perfect person. Because, oh, Connie's perfect because every time she so shows up in stories, she looks like she's going to the ball. I can't do that. I look a hot mess. So now that's literally one of the main reasons why I don't care 
if I go on my stories looking like this. I just want to show other people that even, even if they're a regular person with crazy kids who interrupt them when they're working, that they can do this business too. That's literally all, that's the goal. So we have to just get out of this headspace that we have to be perfect and we have to know all the words and we have to take the best pictures and we have to do this, that, and the other in order to be successful. Because you guys, if I showed you some of the stuff that I used to post, if I showed you the stuff that, uh, that I posted to get to Triple Diamond, you guys would be like, how did you ever make a sale? You guys, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't even pretty. I just did it. They told me that I, has to, I had to post three times a day. So I posted three times a day because that's what they told me to do. So you guys have to be consistent. You have to, have to, have to, have to. You have to show up every single day, even on the days that you don't want to. Let me make sure I didn't miss any of my notes. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Just because I love this. Michelle Obama said in an interview that if we were at the grocery store, right? And we were grocery shopping and someone came up to us at the grocery store and they were like, you're not, you're never going to be successful. You're never going to amount to anything. No one wants anything that you have to offer, blah, 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 blah. We would be like, this person is crazy. Like there is a lunatic. Someone needs to call the cops because this person is a lunatic. There's a maniac in aisle four and we would leave. But when someone tells us these same things, through a computer screen or through a phone, we literally take it as if it's the truth, as if it's like in the Bible and it was written about us. When they're just as crazy as if it was a person walking up to you in the grocery store telling you that you're never going to be successful, telling you that this is crazy, telling you that stuff like that doesn't work. If some random person said that to you in person at the grocery store, you would be like, this person is crazy and you wouldn't pay them a single mind. But when it comes to your cousin who's on food stamps telling you that you're not gonna be successful, you take it for, like that's what it is. Like that's in the Bible, it says that Connie will never be successful because her cousin that's on food stamps said so. You know what I mean? And it's the truth, I've done that. I've literally listened to things or seen things that were written about me and my friends and like from friends and friends and they told me and I like, take it the, like that's what it is. When in all actuality, people are just scared. They, people want you to do good, but they never want you to do better than them. That's just life and it's unfortunate that that's how people are, but most people want you to do good, but never better than them. And they will keep pouring their limiting beliefs on you because it's what, they're, what they feel about themselves. So at the end of the day, you kind of have to just take it with a grain of salt and move on but you have to stop being scared of what people are going to think and what people are going to say because they are going to have an opinion regardless. And if they're not willing to go in the grocery store and wait in line with you and pay for your food, pay for your groceries, pay for the dinners that you feed your kids, they don't deserve any kind of opinion in your life and what you do, especially, I feel like 2020, it's like a new, it's a new is it a new decade or a new century or what is it that they're calling it? A new decade? A new century? A new era? Is that what it is? Decade. Yeah, a new decade. You guys, we don't have any room for 2019, 2019 thinking in 2020. So all of the stuff that you told yourself that you couldn't do this business or that you weren't worthy or that no one wanted it, Let's leave that thinking in the past and you have to change your mindset. And that's one of the hardest things. That was one of the hardest things for me, but get a gratitude journal and start writing every single day, journaling what you're thankful for every single day. What are the things that you're thankful for? And the more things that you're grateful for, the more things that you write down, you're going to start looking for those things every single day. You're going to start looking for the things to be thankful for, the things to be grateful for. I want to make sure I got everything. Yeah, so start with a gratitude journal. Start with some, some YouTube videos. If you don't want to go buy a book or you don't want to do Audible, Google YouTube videos. When you start to think of things to be thankful for, 
then you're going to start looking for blessings, you're going to find them. But when you start looking for things to be negative about, you're going to find them. Or when you start looking for things to be, to bum you out, you're going to find them. Literally. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. So the things that you're saying every single day, even if you're not speaking it, just the things that you're thinking in here, me and Connie today, we, we kept, I was like, okay, I needed, I was having some thoughts and some struggles that I was dealing with. And I was like, okay, I need to stop thinking these things because if I continue to tell myself that I don't think that I'm, you know, capable to lead a team to presidential, I'm never going to. Because when I told myself that I wouldn't be able to go executive and that no one wanted this business, no one did. And I didn't go executive. But the second that I changed that mentality, I started enrolling people like crazy. So it's literally what you're telling yourself, whether it's thoughts or whether it's speaking it into existence. Okay, Connie, I'm going to unmute you. Oh, hold on. Oh. Okay. Good. Yeah, we're good. We can. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to just like correcting your thinking or making sure that you stay on task or making sure that you show up on days where you don't want to, how do you do it? Uh, remind myself that this is my only income and I have to do what I have to do or I'll, I'll be back at a full time job or behind a desk for eight hours a day barely making I mean I made good money but clearly it wasn't enough to cover bills so I just remind myself of that and like obviously there's times that you overthink stuff or there's times that you're like oh my god somebody's gonna judge me for this or oh my gosh I'm gonna hurt somebody's feelings with this but at the end of the day you just have to tell yourself they don't pay your bills and they never will so and this other thing that I always tell myself is like it's going to affect them for that hot second and tomorrow they're going to forget about it. And they're not even going to remember that post that you made or that thing that you said or whatever, because it really didn't mean that much then. They just had an opinion. And you guys, people are like, people are not worried about what you're doing. People are so insanely self-involved that they don't care. They're not worried about what it is that you're doing. And if they are, if they are continuously, I've had friends, well, they're not friends anymore, but I've had friends that I've had since high school. And every single post that I would make, they had something like, they had like a backhanded compliment every single time. And you know what I did after the, the sixth or seventh one, I unfriended him because I was like, I just, I cannot, the, th the, the life that I'm trying to achieve right now just does not have room for people like you. And that's just what it's going to come down to. And at the end of the day, if you have someone who is so dead set on bringing you down, you don't want someone like that in your life. And unfortunately, sometimes it's family. I've had cousins talk about me, yet they're still in their teaching job, hating it, missing out on every single thing when it comes to their kids. So I, it's not, I wouldn't trade places with them. Yeah, Erica's done it. Vanessa's done it. I know Vanessa has had family members that have had opinions. It didn't stop her. She retired from corporate America last year. You know, people, people always have something to say when they're threatened. And it's unfortunate, but that's just how it is. Okay. I kind of wanted to, oh, well, let me read. Vanessa, her cousin, blocked her on Facebook. I've had to block some people because they just, for whatever reason, felt the need to comment on every single one of my posts. It just happens, you guys, and it's unfortunate, but it happens. Rachel Hollis talks about how people talk crap about her and tell her that she's not worthy every single day. The girl's a billionaire, and people still show up to bash her. It's just life. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to go through these comments. Uh, Vanessa, I want to ask you, I know that your voice is like horse, but I want to ask you how you overcome objections, like be it struggling to post every single day or whatever it is that was one of your main objections. How did you overcome that? Okay. So basically you guys, <clears throat> I just had to decide, like, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've been in the business for five years and 
pretty much the highest rank I've hit is diamond, like Lisa said. And the thing is, is I don't want another five years to go by <laughs> and still be in the same spot. So I really just be, and it's so crazy because now, and I, ha you guys, I haven't been sick in years, I feel like, thanks to our products, but just being off a of schedule and it got me this time. So not having a full-time job and, and working from home, <clears throat> Thank God, I feel, I feel like, oh my gosh, it's, I feel like it's such a blessing that I get to be here with my kids, be sick. But what I'm realizing is even though I'm sick, I still need to work. Like I still need to post, I still need to do these things. So I think that it's just, what do you want? And, 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 and the thing is, is like, what you want for the future may not necess necessarily be what you right, want right now, the second that's to feel comfortable. You know, we all wanna feel like, oh, well, I'd rather just go like, watch a movie. I'll do it tomorrow. That was me. I was like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But the thing is, you guys, is there's always going to be some resistance. There's always going to be this thing that's pulling you and it's going to feel so uncomfortable. And when you realize that and you acknowledge it and you, you, and I'm saying this because this, this is me. And I feel like a lot of people, when they get scared <clears throat> or they feel uncomfortable about it, or they procrastinate, it's because that's the thing that you're actually should be doing but you're, it's, it's uncomfortable to you. And the thing that you want, like you start this business, right? For something that you don't have yet. So you gotta do things that you've never ever done. So I think I've just realized over time that you have to do all the hard things. You gotta, you gotta, like Connie said, she doesn't go a day without posting. You know, same with me. I'm like, I at least have to throw up one post, even though I feel like crap. You know, even though, you know, I, I'm still messaging, I'm still doing these things and may, it may not be perfect, but at least if you're doing one thing a day, you know, and even when I was working full time, you know, like you just, like, I feel like, I feel like I was on a better schedule when I was working. I don't know if anybody can relate to that because that's like, you really have to have a lot of, uh, what's the word, uh, not barriers, but um, discipline. Yeah, discipline and you got to say no to more things because you throw all these things on your plate, you know, so <clears throat> I'm learning all of that and it, it's, you know, I'm, I feel so blessed, but at the same time, you have to be even more disciplined because you could sit there and waste a whole bunch of time now, you know what I mean? And that's not, like Connie said, you, like for me now, this is my only income. I mean, yes, my husband has his income too, but I no longer have a corporate job paycheck and, and it works paycheck you know what I mean so this is it you guys so whatever you put on your 2020 vision board is literally like how you need to like build every single day no matter how uncomfortable you are you know so I just feel like I'm tired of being where I'm at so I feel like all my objections are just like it doesn't matter I can't make any more excuses you know what I'm saying so for me I just I got tired of being in the same spot. So and you got, sometimes you'd have to get to that point, you know? So. <clears throat> you do for sure. It ha there has to be something that you want more than where you're at right now. It has to come to a point where you want, whatever it may be, you want to be able to take a vacation and not charge it on a credit card. You want to be able to be at home with your kids full time and still be able to make a, substan a substantial living. Whatever it is, there has to be something more than the fear that you have of showing up every single day. And the good thing is that you guys, showing up can look like whatever it is that you want it to look like. It can be stories, it can be posts, but it has to be something. You have to, you have to do something. And the good thing is that we have so many ideas. We have so many things that we can tell you. Connie can tell you tip after tip after tip how she got to triple. I can tell you tip after tip after tip and things that I did to get to triple. And Vanessa Diamond and Erica Emerald, like we can lay it all out for you. But the thing is, is that you have to pick one or more of those and then do it in order for it to happen for you. You have to, have to. And I promise you that it is so worth showing up you will never regret showing up for your business you will never regret making a post that gets you a loyal customer you will never regret driving an hour to go to a sip and sample or a try it event you will never regret like fitting how many do we have two four six six people in a room in a hotel room to be able to go to conference 
and for everybody to be able to afford it. You will never regret that ever, ever. I promise you, but you just have to show up. You have to. And everybody has objections. Everybody has stuff that they're scared of. Everyone ha can make all the excuses in the world. Vanessa can make an excuse that she's sick. Erica worked retail during Christmas. Like everyone can make excuses as to why they can't show up. I had two kids, you guys, when I, I mean, I still do. I still have them. But I had two little ones. Olivia was one and I was still breastfeeding her. She was in diapers. Anthony was three. It was mass chaos in this house at all times. And Luis worked a lot. So I was pretty much a single mom because he was gone all day long at work. So I had to run a business, figure out how I was going to run that business in between taking care of two kids. I had all the objections in the world. I joined this business for my kids, but I could have easily used them as a reason as to why I wasn't working this business. Well, Olivia is always all over the place. She, you know, she's walking everywhere now. Like I could have, I could have had it all, all the objections. My husband's never home. I don't have any help. I have to do everything myself. I have to do laundry. I have to clean the house. I have to make the food. I have to change the diapers. I have to bathe the kids and keep them alive. Like I could have had all the objections and I could have used my reason why I joined as my reason why I wasn't working this business. And you can very easily do that. You can easily, easily fall into the trap of using your reason why as a reason why you're not working your business. Oh, well, I have a full-time job, but that's why you joined because you didn't want to work a full-time job for the rest of your life. So don't use that reason why you joined as a reason why you're not working because you have a full-time job. Everybody has a job and some people work a heck of a lot harder than you or me. They have crazy hours, crazier than you or me did. They have more than two kids and my kids were pretty, they're pretty well behaved. Some people have kids who they can't control. You know, like everybody has reasons as to why they can't make this business work. I'm not smart enough. I'm not funny. I don't think I'm pretty enough. I don't think I'm a size, because I'm not a size two. Because I don't eat organic. Because I don't work out. What You could have so many different objections. And at the end of the day, if you look at all of our ambassadors, if you look at all of our VIP, triples, presidentials, and ambassadors, there's not a single one of them that look the same, talk the same, act the same, post the same. But that's the beauty about this business is you don't have to be Connie to be able to go triple. You don't have to be Lisa. You don't have to be Vanessa. You don't have to be Erica. You can just be you. But you have to make sure that you show up every single day, even on the days that you don't want to. Let me make sure that I read all the comments. Do you guys have any other questions or anything that you want to add? Any kind of like objections? Melissa, it's even Sarah, when she, when she first started, she was a charge nurse at work nights and she had a newborn. So seeing that I'm like, holy crap, I didn't even, I didn't even have to like work as hard as she did because I was home, even though I did work and I still did hair outside of my house or inside my house and stuff like that. There's so many other people who are working this business and killing it. And they're a heck of a lot busier than we are. There's like ambassadors with like seven kids and they went ambassador while they had seven kids. I'm like, what? How? I can't even control these two. And you have seven, like there's always going to be someone busier than us killing it at this business. It just comes down to, do you want it bad enough? And just like Vanessa said, you kind of got to get tired of where it is that you're at. And you have to get rid of that kickstand. Jade Hooper always talks about, stop leaning on your kickstand. Like you join this business and you're like, yeah, I'm going to try it out. But if it doesn't work out, then I'll just go back to my nine to five. It's okay. When it's not okay, because the reason why you join this is your nine to five is killing you. And you're still not even making ends meet. You're still not even making enough to be able to pay your bills, but you're going to use that as a kickstand. Get rid of the kickstand and just decide that this isn't what you want for your life and you are going to make this work regardless. So get rid of the kickstand and be it. I'm not telling you to quit your job. Like, obviously I would never tell you to quit your job, but you kind of have to just like think of it like, well, I'm not even worried about, not that I'm not worried about this job, but I'm not banking on this job because I'm not going to be here forever. 
this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm going to be in a year. This is where I'm going to be in five months. This is where I'm going to be in two months. But you have to start telling yourself that you are capable because you are, you're 100% capable. But you just have to start working as if that's where you're headed because you should be. You know, Connie said it earlier, your, your income will never surpass your mindset. Ever. Ever. Your income will never surpass your mindset. Melissa, then, you know, that's a huge goal to be able to quit your job entirely. That means that you probably have to make, make it to diamond or double, depending on like how much you make. You can do it. People have gone diamond in three months. When I started working this business, Connie, you went diamond in three months, four months, five months. No, it was a year. Okay. Even then, like Vanessa, how long did it take you to go diamond? Um, it took me six months. Dang! Badass. Well, let me tell you guys something. Back then, ignorance on fire. Had no clue what I was doing. Had no clue how to map. Had no clue how to do anything. You should see my posts. I was doing the ones wrapping the boobs and all kinds of crazy stuff. And that got me to Diamond. I don't know how. But then when it hit Diamond, I was like, oh, my God, I'm a leader. What? What does that mean? What? And then you get in your own head. You get in your own head. So just, just go have freaking ignorance on fire. You don't need to know everything. <laughs> you really don't. No, you don't. I was the same way. I, it took me seven months to go diamond. Yeah. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I think what helped me is I didn't know anybody. I didn't know all of these leaders. And I, I didn't have all these people to look at. I had a few select people that I had met in person and then my sponsor and that was it. I feel like now you kind of let analysis paralysis get the best of you because you see Connie doing something and you're like, oh wait, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. You see Erica doing something and you're like, oh wait, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. And then you see Vanessa and then you see Candace and you're like, oh, there's so much stuff. Like, what am I supposed to do? Do what feels normal to you. Do what feels normal. It's not going to feel normal and you're still going to be scared. Do what you like doing. I loved selling wraps, but because I needed the money. So that's what I did. And I literally sold wraps like crazy. I messaged people like crazy because I had to sell these wraps. I had to. So it, it like, it doesn't matter what it is that you do as long as you do it. So just like Vanessa said, like it was ignorance on fire. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I just knew that I was supposed to post about the business. I was supposed to ask people if they wanted to make money. And I was supposed to ask people if they had any weight loss goals or health goals or wellness goals. And I just did that month after month after month after month. And that's still what I do today. I, nothing has changed. I do the same thing. The only difference is, is now my pictures look prettier because I slap a filter on it. That's it. <clears throat> Melissa, so our first Black Diamond, which was Cammie Dempsey. It took her seven months to go ruby. Was it seven or eight? Seven? I think it took Cammie seven months to go ruby. Or no, was it seven months to sign her first distributor? I think yeah. it was Stephanie Dunn, though. It took her six months to sign her first DT, I feel like. That, yeah, that was Cammie. Jocelyn Yates. Jocelyn Yates, she's one of our Ambassador Diamonds. In her first year, she didn't sign a distributor. That's insane. So doesn't matter what you haven't done. It's now time to focus on what you're going to do. Because what you haven't done, it doesn't matter. You haven't done it. Who cares? It's easy to get sucked into because I haven't done this. I'm never going to do this when that's totally not the case. I didn't do anything for my first three months. But because I didn't do anything, what didn't mean that I didn't know how or that I wasn't capable. I just had to learn. And that's literally all this is, is you just have to learn how to work this business. You're not going to know how to, when you first join, you're not going to know how to enroll a distributor. No one does. You're not going to know how the wraps work. No one does. You're not going to know what's a good, what's a, an attraction marketing post. No one does. This is all stuff that you learn as you go. 
Connie learned how to be a badass person that shows up in her stories every single day wasn't some, I can guarantee you it wasn't something that she did before. She learned this. She learned to be consistent because when you're consistent, then you get a low customer. And then you're like, oh crap, I'm going to keep going. And then you get another low customer. Then you're like, oh my gosh, that was fun. I'm going to get another low customer. And then you got a distributor. You're like, holy crap, if I, give, if I show them how to get two low customers, I get a hundred dollar bonus. And then you do it again. And then you show them to do the same thing. It's literally, we're, we do the same thing every single day every single day and it can seem so repetitive and it can seem I struggle with this a lot because that's literally all we do is the same thing every single day to think that literally the things that got you to ruby is what's going to get you to diamond and to ambassador like the, our ambassadors are doing the same exact thing that our rubies are doing they're looking for four loyal customers and they're looking for three distributors but every single one of them does it different it doesn't matter how you do it, it just matters that you do it which is literally the beauty about this business. It does not matter if stories is your jam and you feel comfortable there, then make stories. If posting is your jam, and I saw, I think it was Melissa that said she never knows what to post. Okay, Melissa, do you mean, what do you mean? Did she get off? Hold on, oh no, just kidding. The chat was covering your face, I'm sorry. I'm like, uh, where'd you go? Cause you were in my left corner. Let me unmute you. Oh, I'm unmuted. Like posts on Facebook, like um, Instagram, I've been kind of doing like stories that are about personal things that mm -hmm. I'm going through that can relate to other people. Okay. But I don't want to put that on Facebook just because there's more people that I know. It's hard to explain. <laughs> Um, like there's more family on Facebook and I don't really want, I don't want to share all that with them. Mm -hmm. We, I was literally just talking about this with Erica Yeah. So, on Facebook. There's actually a way that you can hide your posts from other people, like from people seeing it. Uh huh. You know how to do that? Yeah, I do. Okay. So even I think, uh, I don't know how to explain this. I want to do like more of like a generalized post about the business, but I struggle with like what to say. You know what I mean? No, so, I'm going to be honest with you. The generalized and like generic posts that won't ever get me distributors. Okay. It's, it's rare where I can throw up a generic post and someone's like, I'm ready to join. I'm ready to join. Right. It's the uncomfortable posts that I write about when we had $20 left and that had to last us a week. Mm -hmm. When we, when we had it, when I had to tell, or when my husband had to tell his friend that our car battery died, but it wasn't that it died. It's just that we didn't have enough money for gas because our son got sick and he needed medicine. Yeah. His friend came to pick him up to take him to work. It's those posts that are so, <coughs> I guess you could say, cause when I joined this business, I was, 25 years old, 26 years old. And I felt like at that time we should have it together. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we should not be living the struggle that we lived when we were 21, mm -hmm. but we still were. So it's those posts that I was embarrassed by, but that literally hundreds of people could relate to. Right. So yes, it sucks. And those are the, those are, you know, those are the embarrassing ones. Cause it's like, I don't want to, like Connie said, everything looks great from the outside looking in, right? Everything looks great. You look like you're killing it and you're adulting and everything's fine. When in all actuality, most people aren't okay. Most people are just living paycheck to paycheck. So in order to pull something out of these people, you have to share those uncomfortable ones. Yeah. Those embarrassing ones, those ones that literally make you want to throw up when you click the post. Okay. I, yeah. It sucks. It's, I mean, it's not easy. You know, it's, it's embarrassing, especially when it's like you, you personally know these people. Mm -hmm. Like now my Instagram and Facebook is so flooded with people that I don't know aside from Facebook and Instagram that it doesn't really affect me. But in the beginning, 
the people, my friends on Facebook were my friends. Like we had history. We went to elementary school together. We worked together. We knew each other in one way, shape or form. It wasn't like Instagram, like now where you send off like 20 friend requests to random people that you don't know. Back in the day, I knew all of these people. So it was very, very embarrassing. It was, it was scary to be able to put this out. Mm-hmm. You know, because I knew them. I'm like, okay, well, I know this person. We worked at Aveda together. We worked at Ulta. I went to elementary school. Our parents are friends. Like, everyone. Or, that's my husband's cousin, or that's my husband's aunt. Like, I knew these people. So it was, it was heck of a lot scarier to do it back then. But you just, you just have to. What was it that made you join? I just wrote it. <laughs> you wrote it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Totally. <laughs> but that's, do, I can't even begin to tell you how many people, how many women. I know, and that's mm-hmm. what I'm going for through Instagram. Mm-hmm. A lot, actually. I've been working that kind of good I think okay so then focus on Instagram there's people who have built ambassador on Instagram Mm -hmm. right now Facebook isn't something that you can do doesn't matter there's people on both platforms that's like when I uh had messaged you the other day asking you about like with the Facebook groups yeah um kind of when there's a lot of groups uh, with this situation you know and all these people posting, literally asking for a way out and what can I do to make money? And if I post anything, you know, commenting, they kick you out. Yeah. And it's like, it's ridiculous because they're are, asking for it. People are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They get offended, but nonetheless, so like, then your goal would be to move those people over to your Instagram. Even if you say like, huh. Hey, you guys, um, I'm look, I'm new to Instagram or I'm looking to grow my Instagram. Let's cheer each other on. What's your Instagram link so I can follow you. It doesn't have to be business related, but if if you have stuff going on on Instagram, then the goal is to get people to the Instagram, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then just do that. Get people to your Instagram. Oh, that's a, that's a really good idea. I'm going to try that. It doesn't have to be anything business related or anything like, that are going to piss off the group people because you know they're crazy. Right. But I always tell people, think about the, think about what it was that made you join. What was it that made you join this business? Was it like someone talking about their struggles and now they're making an extra $300? Like whatever it is that got you to join, Mm -hmm. then do that. I joined for an extra $200. Yeah, It was my sponsor saying that when she joined this business, her (laughs) goal was to help her husband quit his pizza delivery job. He had a full-time job and then at night he would deliver pizzas. And I was like, holy moly, like if she can do this and have her husband quit his pizza delivery job, like maybe I can make enough to only have to go back to the salon part-time. Right, right. Or whatever it is for Erica maybe if I join this, I won't ever have to work another Black Friday ever again. Mm -hmm. Like whatever it is, it doesn't have, I feel like people think that it has to be this huge thing of I'm making $10,000 a month. I've earned $90,000 in bonuses. No one cares that they're even capable of doing that. So that's why a lot of the time I don't even share that. No one knows what a triple diamond leader is aside from the people in our company. I could go around telling people I'm a triple diamond leader with it works. They'd be like, okay, who gives a crap? I don't even know what the hell that means. Yeah. Like no one knows. Mm-hmm. I'm still just a regular person. I'm still just a regular mom, a regular wife, a regular girl. But right. you want, that's like what you want to portray. Cause I feel like when you start to think that you have to be this perfect person or this, this leader in order to have like some credibility Mm-hmm. If that was the case, none of us would get started because we all join as distributors. None of us have credibility when we join. None of us have a story when we join. But you have to have conviction and just 
share, you have to share that. And I remember too, when I went diamond, I shared it because they were like, shell, where are you going? Tell people where you're going. And I'm like, okay, I'm going diamond. And I said it for four months. I'm going diamond. I'm going to earn $10,000 bonus. Didn't do it. I'm going diamond. I'm going to earn $10,000 bonus. I didn't do it. Did it again. I didn't do it. On the fourth month, I did it. And I could have been like, holy hell, these people are going to think I'm batshit crazy. Like I've been saying that I'm, I'm going to do this and I have yet to do it, but it's, you have to speak it because I was like, okay, these people are watching me. Even if they weren't, chances are they probably weren't. But I'm like, I have to show up. I have to do this, not just for myself, but like to be able to show people like I am worthy. Mm -hmm. Like I can do this. All those people that said that I, it wouldn't work or that it's a scheme or that it's this and the other. And, you know, that doesn't really work. And regular people like aren't good at stuff like that. I was like, I need to do this. And exactly, exactly what Connie said, delete those people that make you feel like you can't be vulnerable with because they don't support you. Exactly. And I lost friends in, in all actuality, those aren't friends because if my daughter or my son had friends like that, I would be like, what are you doing, babe? Yeah. Those are not friends. They don't care about you. They probably don't even like you. But when it's happening to us, it's like, those are my friends. Like, oh my gosh, when, no, they're not. But yeah, so don't worry about Facebook then. Work on Instagram. You can build a diamond, you can build a double on Instagram and just get those people over. That's all you do. I do that a lot of, in a lot of the mom groups that I'm in, mm -hmm. I'll make that same post. Like, hey, I'm trying to grow my Instagram. Let's all help each other out. If you're a mom, if you're a stay-at-home mom, like, let's link up yeah. and I'll, I'll get like 20 to 30 followers in a day just from doing that. And that's I'm literally that. that's a good idea. The goal is like, ideally it'd be nice to get people to come to us. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's work on that. Like, that's obviously we still have to do our part, but let's get people to come to us on social media. Even like when I'm out and about, if I have, say I'm wearing like a sweater or a shirt and they ask me like, Hey, you <coughs> like, I'm interested in this, or I saw that you guys had this, blah, blah, blah. Can you tell me more? I'm like, you know what? I don't have any business cards. I do. They're in my wallet. But I give them my phone. I said, Fi find yourself on social media, and I send you a message. I'll send you a message and answer all your questions. Now I have them because it went from us exchanging, having a small conversation in Target, and I can give them my card, and they could lose it, or the kid could trash it. And now they get to see me every single day. But you also have to remember that, like, even if you get people to your Instagram, if you don't show up every single day, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, you can talk to all the people out in the world, but if you're not, con if you're not getting them back to follow you on social media, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. They have someone to follow. <laughs> yeah. Right. They have, like, if they follow you, but yet you don't, you post once a week or once mm -hmm. every two weeks, it doesn't matter. Mm hmm So, like, don't let all that groundwork be for nothing. Right. Don't let you watching countless hours of YouTube or podcast, don't let it be for nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't let it just be wasted time. Like you, we actually have to do the things that we're listening to on podcasts or on Audible or whatever it is. Right? Yeah, I spent a lot of time listening. No, no, it's time to start doing. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, I do too, but you just want to make sure that you're, you're executing the stuff that you're being told. Right. Or that you're listening to. Oh. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions or any, anything, any objections, anything that you want to go over? Connie, do you want to add anything? Okay. You guys. Today. We have, our, we have our sizzle call on Thursday, which will be a Zoom with Rhonda Hartman, like we have every single Thursday. So I will see you guys on that call. But if you guys don't have any questions, then we will call it a night because it is, I don't even know what time it is. It is 10, 12. So that's an hour. Okay, you guys have a good night. Thanks for hopping on with us. If you guys ever have any questions, text me, message me, whatever. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.